I'm taking my budget camera on a budget break to Llandundo. Nestled between the Little and Great Orms, it's the largest holiday resort in Wales, don't you know? But before a hard day's testing, I need to get my head down, and a budget break means budget accommodation. Oh, hello. Oh, right. It appears you have to be quite the social butterfly when you share a dorm. Are you John Bentley? After a good night's kip, a full day's sightseeing slash camera testing lies ahead. I'm starting with a visit to Llan Dudno's famous pier, stretching majestically into the Irish Sea. Originally built in 1878, it was extended in 1884. First up, I want to get to grips with the cannon's form and function. First impressions are it doesn't feel cheap at all. The carbon fibre and polycarbonate body is fairly light. It's smooth to the touch, nice to hold, well finished. The control layout is very logical and can easily access functions like the focusing mode, the ISO, the white balance. There's a dial there at the top to spool through the apertures and shutter speeds to select the exact ones you want. And it's all clearly displayed on the screen at the back. Although it's not a touch screen, it's not an articulated screen either. So those are two areas where they've definitely been saving money. Time to get snapping, and luckily I've found some glamorous day trippers who've agreed to act as models. Yes, yeah, good. The 2000D has an APS-C sized sensor with a respectable 24 megapixels, but I'm finding the optical viewfinder a bit small and pokey. Thank you. Overall, I'm pleased. Good colour and detail and pleasantly blurred backgrounds without digital trickery. Right. Time to head to my next attraction, and I think my budget will just stretch to the bus fare for a leisurely ride to a spectacular piece of natural history, the Great Orm. The Great Orm is a limestone headland towering above the northwest end of Landudno. It's full of scenic potential to test the cannon further, and the time-honoured way to climb the Orm is aboard a beautiful Victorian tram. It's the perfect opportunity to try out the cannon's video capabilities. Now, the 2000D shoots in full HD video, but not 4K, and only at frame rates of up to 30 frames a second. Even though the kit lens has built-in image stabilisation, it doesn't work well in video. The footage is shaky, and the autofocus is very slow and difficult to control. Hmm, a very frustrating video experience, frankly. Eventually, I reach the top. 207 metres, or 679 feet in old money. And it's a great vantage point to get some landscape shots. On its widest setting, the Canon's 18 to 55 mm lens captures some pleasing photos of Clan Dudno. But the long end of the zoom's a bit too short to pap any frame-filling close-ups of the tram. Of course, a DSLR allows you to swap and change from an almost infinite variety of lenses, and overall I was impressed by the Canon's colour rendition and reasonable dynamic range. Time for a spot of lunch, so I headed to nearby Fish Tram Chips, an award-winning fishery frequented by Brian May of Queen, no less. Unfortunately, as I'm on a budget, I can only afford a measly cone of chips. Oh dear. Very good chips they were, though and I'm soon back on the bus and heading towards some action. At 750 metres, Hlandutno's toboggan run is the longest in Britain, an ideal location to see if my budget cannon can hack it as a speedy snap-up. More evidence of cost-cutting here. The EOS 2000D comes with the same Digic 4 Plus processor as its predecessor, and it can only shoot at three frames a second. It also has only nine focus points to choose from, but I still managed to focus reasonably well on my hard-working crew. And I can experiment with shutter speeds. It's clear and sharp at one four thousandth of a second, a bit too blurry at an eightieth, and somewhere in between manages to convey a sense of speed. My final test of the day is of the camera's low-light capabilities, so I'm heading down into the largest Bronze Age mine in the world. was carved three and a half thousand years ago using nothing more than stone and bone tools. To help get a decent photo in these dark and gloomy conditions, I brought along my budget tripod to minimise camera shake, and I'm also going to adjust the camera's sensitivity. First glance, the maximum ISO setting available is 6,400, but if you penetrate the custom function menu, you can push it a bit further to 12,800. 
Let's see what they look like. Increasing the ISO makes the camera more sensitive to light, so shutter speeds can be shorter. But doing this can introduce noise, making the image look blocky and smudged. I'm also using the self-timer to avoid any extra camera shake generated by my finger on the shutter button. Auto-focusing in the dark was a bit hit and miss, but after a few attempts, I soon got an acceptable shot. So, after a fabulous day of sightseeing, was the Canon worth the trip? Well, I've had a, a gloriously nostalgic day. Not because I'm at a wonderful British seaside resort, but because I've been reintroduced to the sort of budget DSLR I first started using a decade or so ago. Is it worth investing 350 quid in one? Well, probably not. It's uh, not a bad camera by any means, but I think I'd be investing in the past rather than the future. John, what do you mean by that? I think these days you're better off investing in a mirrorless camera system. Lots of advantages, particularly when it comes to shooting video. Canon do them. Good value at the moment is Sony's outgoing Alpha 6000. It'll cost you about 100 quid more, but overall better value. As ever, sage advice, Mr Bentley.